brand new year and a brand new volunteering in the Valley. We've got some really exciting things to talk with you about today. Volunteering in the Valley is a cooperative effort between CVTV and the Long Branch Area Chapter of AARP. We all know who they are. Okay, today we have with us three individuals who are involved in a brand new program they're trying to begin called Respite Night. What's a respite night? <laughs> well, we've got three folks here who are going to help us answer that question. Sure. We have Haley Hatfield, who is Special Needs Coordinator. We have Matt Steger. Steger. Yep. I'm going that I and that E. And I know, it's confusing <laughs> okay, to everybody. I can spell it, but can I pronounce it? There you go. And he's the lead minister. And then we have the children's pastor, who is Clint Bowles, and these folks are all from Crossroads Christian Church. And we're going to find out what respite <coughs> night is for, because this is a brand new concept in our community at yeah. least, and I think it's going to provide a wonderful service to the families in the community that need it, and a wonderful opportunity to volunteer yeah. for people whose hearts are touched by this kind of special situation. Yeah. So. Haley, do you want to start off and tell me what the idea of respite night is and who is the respite for? For sure. <laughs> um, respite night is a night for families who have children with special needs. Um, we know that sometimes parents need a night off and a lot of parents are able to grab the high school neighbor down the street or something to babysit, but if your children have special needs, um, it might not be that simple. So we wanted to provide our respite night so that the parents could take a break, um, relax, have dinner, go on a date, or take a nap. Um, and we would have the children in our care, and we would have trained volunteers so that the parents could know that um, their kids are in good hands. Matt, would you like to help us with some information about the type of volunteers you're going to need? Because with the special young people that you're going to be taking care of mm -hmm. in, at respite night, you're going to need some very special volunteers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the volunteers that we look for and need with our respite nights is uh, someone that can be active. Um, our respite nights, uh, are they are an active participation. <laughs> you're running, you're chasing, you're keeping up with, you're playing ball, things like that. You're playing in bubbles, and so it needs to be a volunteer who's able to do that. So an older an older high school student, a college student, uh, a younger, really any adult, but someone that can maintain that pace for several hours. Um, and it's a, it's a fun night, it's enjoyable, it's safe. Um, one of the things with our volunteers is that they need to pass a background check. We background check all of our volunteers. Uh, we want families to feel secure uh, that their child is taken care of and that they are in a safe place. And that begins with the volunteers that we have helping. And so uh, if someone would like to volunteer, they are going to need to pass a background check uh, through the church that we do for everyone. So. Well, if it was my child in the program, I wouldn't want anything less. Absolutely. So absolutely. if I'm a volunteer in the program, I wouldn't expect anything exactly. less. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Clint, can you tell us a little bit now about what the training is like? Sure. And do you have a meeting planned where yeah. folks could come in and get mm -hmm. a feel for what it would be like to work in the program? Yeah, sure. Um, of course, we want to have all of our volunteers trained uh, to have interactions with these kids, there's so many different special needs that are out there that for us to just kind of blanket coverage of training is, is a little bit difficult. And so our training times are, are wide ranging as far as talking about all of the different disabilities that they, they could encounter during the night, but we also make sure that they are paired up with a buddy, uh, whoever their child is for that night. Um, they get a paper that actually shows what their disability might be, um, what their special needs are, what, what different um, things are needed to be able to handle the night well. Um, so our training times, are we do talk about what we're going to be doing that night, uh, different times that we'll be in different places, um, and what to expect overall for the night. But uh, as far as our training goes, it, it is a fun time because we get to talk about um, all of the different challenges that are there and the ones that we have conquered in the past, the ones that might we might face that are new, um, and just look at what the night is like overall uh, and the fun that we'll get to have together and uh, just the little details that you'll need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we always have a, a training night 
uh, before our respite nights and this one that we have coming up uh, it'll be on February 9th at 6 p.m. Um, we'll just get together and talk through what the night looks like and then answer any <laughs> questions um, that might be able to come up during that time and try to pair our volunteers up where they can best fit. Um, mm -hmm. Not everybody's a perfect fit with certain areas, so we want to make sure that our volunteers are where they're, where they're most gifted. Yeah. Um, and if, if we can do that well, then I think that that helps our respite night overall uh, really true. take off. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you have a respite night scheduled at this time? Yes, we so. do. Um, our next respite night is going to be on Saturday, February 11th from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock um, at Crossroads Christian Church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all you families out there whose greatest blessing mm -hmm. may also be the heaviest burden that you bear, keep in mind that this is an opportunity for you to refresh, yeah. take a little time for yourself, take a little time for the other children in the household, get that deep breath, get refreshed, yeah. and get ready to pick that child back up at the end of the evening and go again. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> tell us how the idea came about. I love the idea. Um, we, we went to... Um, Grace Bible Church mm -hmm. in Kansas City, Missouri. We had heard great things about their special needs ministry, and we knew that we wanted to start special needs ministry within our church, and we weren't sure how to do it. Yeah. And so we went to their church, and they invited us to come and to kind of shadow with them, and we actually got to sit in on their respite night training that they provided for their volunteers. Um, and so while we were there, you know, they told us about respite night and what it was, it, um, just the big impact that it had made on their um, part of Kansas City and we were really impressed with it so we came back right away and wanted to start it here yeah. and make it in the surrounding area. So. And you know that's one of the greatest way I think for some of these special programs and community efforts come about yeah. is through sharing ideas with other communities and yeah. with other groups mm -hmm. and because we can't always manage everything on our own, the partnering works yeah. out wonderfully. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, they can provide you <coughs> some leadership as far as how do you train, how do you get started, and I would be willing to bet within a reasonable length of time there will be other churches around our area who mm -hmm. may be coming and looking to yeah. you folks yeah. for guidance to start that in another community in, mm -hmm. in, we the, hope so. in the area. Yeah, absolutely. So, I know that your church also does the Agape Cafe and mm -hmm. you're still doing meals that are now all delivered meals. Mm -hmm. And is that every Saturday? Yeah, it's every, every Saturday. Saturday. Um, and I mean, it, it's open to anyone. You just call the church office uh, and you can set that meal up. Um, it, going kind of on what Haley said as far as that visit, even stepping back a little bit further than that, as a church, it's... It's really our goal. Um, it's kind of what we work towards is to is to connect our community together and to connect them to Jesus. And as a person who works to try to do that, um, Jesus hung out with people that a lot of other people didn't want to. And there are a lot of people right here in our own backyard that seem to be forgotten. And some of those are our special needs families. And so uh, we can't sit and just let people be ignored uh, in that realm. And so that's, that was some of the beginning stages to get this off the ground, uh, was we can't let these families be ignored. And we want them to know that you're not going to burden us. Um, you're not going to wear us out in a couple hours, uh, <laughs> or whoever you bring, they are not going to wear us out. And so we don't want you to feel burdened or, uh, inconvenienced by bringing uh, your child to the church for several, several hours. We want them to be there. And, mm -hmm. you know, Thinking uh, about people that I know personally, families that I know that have the special needs children. And I know every one of us, and I know every one of you out there watching today yeah. also know families with special needs mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And you've seen their struggles with trying to have an opportunity to even go and, and take care of things that are necessary and have someone reliable mm -hmm. that can provide care for that child while mm -hmm. they have to be away, much less have an evening where they can say, for three hours, I can just be me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can refresh. 
yeah. I can renew mm -hmm. and come back and help take care of that yeah. child with a new energy and Absolutely. a new light in my mm -hmm. eye and mm -hmm. a little boost in my step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. absolutely. There's so many things that all of us can do. Yeah. And really, they, they don't take that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple of things that I always think that nobody can give except those of us who own it, and that's our time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that comes to do things like volunteering yeah. in the program that we've talked about today. And also things like your Agape Cafe. And one other thing, in the winter time, we always have a special need for blood donors. Mm -hmm. And so I do just want to give a shout out to those of you who maybe haven't given blood for a while check your area, find out when your next blood drive is, make sure that that asset is available for mm -hmm. those who need it too. Yeah. Now, to wrap up, are there any things that we need to know about respite night mm -hmm. that we haven't already covered? I think that um, we've used the term child several times mm -hmm. in who is invited to the respite night, uh, but it the word child is not, you know, elementary school where uh, we use the term child, but anybody that has a special need, uh, they are invited to come as well as their siblings. Uh, we want it to be a night for parents, single to get whatever. We want it to be a night where parents can step out and breathe. And so we invite siblings as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that it is open to anybody with a special need. It's not just younger age kids. So even if this was a teen or a young Absolutely. adult, sure. it, they would still be welcome, pro, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. provided they kind of meet the criteria mm -hmm. that they yeah. have to have mm -hmm. somebody with skill and training and knowledge of their disability of course. To, to be able to be left s safely and securely yeah. Yeah. with some out outside yeah. the family. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And, yeah. and with our signups too, when people sign up online, uh, we have them fill out a plan of care form. And what that does is it informs us of all of their disabilities, all of the uh, behavioral problems that they might have, anything that they might need help with eating or, or using the restroom or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We get all of that information so that we are best prepared mm -hmm. to be able to facilitate whatever we need to for that child. Yeah. Um, and and it, there is no age on it. We, yeah. we love the, the older kids and the younger kids. All of them, they're, they're all kids. We're all kids. And so yeah. we all just have a good time <laughs> together. Uh, you'll see volunteers having just as much fun. Yeah. Uh, as the kids do. Um, you, you see dancing, you see singing, you see making art, crafts, whatever, playing games. It, it really is just a fun, nonstop three hours <laughs> of energy going yeah. on. Uh, and, and we love it just as much, I think, as the parents yeah. do. Yeah. The stories we get back from parents when they come in of, wow, nobody has ever done this for us before, and nobody has thought of us this way before. Um, just, just the, the relief on their face to see that somebody just took three hours out of a, mm -hmm. of a weekend just to help them. Right. Um, just, it does it for us. I mean, it, it gives us the, the desire and the drive to want to keep on yeah. doing this. And assuming that you have the volunteers turn out and so forth, uh, what is your tentative schedule for how often you would like to do these? Well, this is our fifth one. Um, ah, so, so this you're is, already, we, you're already yeah, got your people. Yeah, we did a couple in-house so that we could Good. kind of get the kinks worked out. And then uh -huh. when we open our doors mm -hmm. uh, to the community, mm -hmm. now we're, we're ready. We, we want to do this every quarter. Um, and we, yeah. we did all last year, um, loved the scheduling of it and how it worked out. Um, and we're going to continue to do that all throughout this year. So, yeah. And I hear what you're saying about the volunteers enjoying yeah. themselves mm -hmm. as much as the yeah. as the young people in that were there as part of the program. Yeah. And isn't that the way it always is yeah. when we turn yeah. out for something and give of ourselves? Don't we always get more back yeah. than yeah. we've yeah. actually yeah. given? Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Keep that in mind. You can be part of this too or part of something else. Look yeah. around your community and find something that fits you, something that makes you feel better at the end of the day when you go back home and say, I lent a hand, I offered an idea, I made a phone call, I folded some, a letter and put it in an envelope, I worked with somebody at the nursing home who wanted a letter written to family. I did any number of things. 
They don't sound big, but they're huge. Mm -hmm. They're huge in terms of human energy, our sharing, our love just as one to another. And if this was everybody everywhere, we'd have all of our problems solved pretty <laughs> much, wouldn't yeah. we? We want to thank you for coming. Absolutely. And thank any you. time you want to come back and talk about your program, sure. you're more than welcome. And for those of you out there who know of a group in your community that needs to get their information out on volunteering in the Valley, give us a heads up. We'd love to put you in these chairs <laughs> and your program on the air and make the community aware of where other volunteers can go and get their happiness. <laughs> Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.